Hi friends, this is Caitlin and welcome back to the Possum Stamps channel. Today I'm sharing with you this Candy Christmas shaker card. It's a slimline shaker and it is so stinking cute. Perfect for winter or Christmas or whatever holiday wintry needs you may have. And I especially this love this one for kids. Um, my daughters were obsessed with it when I made it and I think the colors just lend perfectly to that audience. So I started out by using this beautiful all aboard stamp set. This is new out this week as part of the new holiday release and it is so cute. Um, <laughs> so we're going to be using that as well as the candy Christmas sequin mix. This is what inspired all of my colors. I also wanted to share with you the other sequin mixes. So we have frosty morning, we have silver tinsel, and then my second favorite from this one is the Santa baby, which is so cute. I love those color combinations and I have already used that one as well. So I also grabbed the um, cloud stencil, which is perfect for this card because it is a slimline card. And so we're going to be able to get those beautiful clouds all the way across our background with some ink blending. And I'm just in love with this and I can't wait to jump in with it into it with you. So I started out by stamping out my train and I did decide to do this as one solid image that I'm going to fussy cut out with a white border all the way around just so that it was easier to attach it as one solid piece to my card front on top of that shaker pouch that we're going to make with some packaging. So I'm just laying out all of my little um, train pieces kind of playing around with where all of the little extras were going to go. I love that this stamp set has those extras and I really wanted to stamp in my moose and mask him first into the window. So I put him on top of where he would go on that front car and I'm stamping him and I just placed my other stamps that I kind of lined up over on that packaging just so they kind of held their order and I wouldn't have to think about it again. So I masked him off with just some full stick post-it. That's my masking of choice. Please excuse my head. I tried my hardest to edit it out of all of these, but I definitely, this was one that I really took my time with lining everything up, making sure that all of my images were exactly where I wanted them. And it was definitely worth it in the end to take that extra second to make sure that everything was as straight as possible. So I literally just worked my way down the train, adding in each car and then going back in to add on the extras like the little coal pile which I also think would be really cute to add some glitter to and make it like a little glitter confetti pile and then on this one that's kind of a lower flat car I'm gonna add on that sleigh which is super adorable and then we're gonna put presents in this last one so you could definitely customize this to the size of your card if you're doing a regular a2 size card you could do it horizontal and then maybe just do four cars instead of five. Um, but for slimline, this worked out perfect. I did go in with a marker and just add little connections between my cars. And then it was time to color. So I did pour out some of that candy Christmas sequin mix into my little dish there just as my color, color inspiration. Um, as I was kind of referring to my markers and picking out all of my shades, I just, sometimes it's nice to pull in the inspiration colors and have them right there to make sure that everything looks the way that I think it will in my head. So I colored in the front train part with these BG markers and I'm going to use the same color combinations all the way through my car. All of those I'll have the color combos listed down below in the description box for you as well as all of my other supplies that I'm using today from Possum. Um, I'm just so in love with this holiday release. I really feel like there's something for everyone. Um, with this release, there's a few that are a little more on the elegant side. There's some that are super cutesy, some like this that I feel like are truly could just be general winter cards and would be absolutely adorable. So whatever you do or don't celebrate in December, you are all set with this release. 
I love cards like this where I can use the same color scheme all the way throughout, where it's not monochromatic, but I have a very limited color palette. I think it just makes for a really cute, cohesive look, and it also just helps me artistically not to feel super overwhelmed because I know what my options are. So the only exception to this kind of color scheme was the mousse, which I did want to keep him kind of natural colors. So I went in with some e-markers and shaded him up. Um, I just gave him a darker head and body and then a lighter muzzle and antlers. Um, yeah, so it was kind of fun playing back and forth with my colors, kind of deciding what was going to be pink versus what would be teal. And then I just went in with neutral grays for kind of some metal accents and that darkest and eight for all of the wheels all the way across. Basically, they're black, but you know, the N8 is just a tiny bit less harsh than the true 100 black. So I worked my way through. I did try to kind of break up uh, my coloring into chunks so that each layer would have kind of time to dry. I was a little bit worried about my colors bleeding. So I did, you could say I did the pinks on two different cars and then went back in to add the teal on both of them afterwards just to give a couple extra seconds of drying time between each color group. And then like I said, I decided to make that little pile on that car kind of like coal using those same neutral markers. But the next time I use this stamp set, I really think I'm going to glitter that up and have it be like a little glitter confetti pile. I just think that is so sinking cute. You could even do multiple cars with different colors of glitter. Maybe I'll do that next time. So I'm just working my way down the line and um, the there is a coordinating die set that goes with these stamps and so you can use those to cut them all out. It might make it again a little less overwhelming um, or you could break it up depending on time and just color these all separate, die cut them out when you're ready. Um, but I really love, like I said, the ease of just adhering this as one solid piece to my shaker panel. So kind of just depending on what you're using it for um, would be, you know, the decision maker for me. So I, I think that this little sleigh is so sweet. It's definitely not big enough for Santa in my humble opinion, um, but it is maybe a toy one, maybe something for the kids, or maybe that's how the moose gets around when he's not on his train right? Um, so I'm going to make sure that the possum stamps links are all down in the description because there is so much fun inspiration on Instagram right now with all of the design team using all of these new sets. Um, and it's just, even just if you're going for some color inspiration or Christmas card inspiration in general, you cannot go wrong. The other people on this design team are just absolutely out of this world. So once I have all of my images colored up, like I said, I am going to go in and fussy cut. And for this, I did decide to leave a nice white border. And that was mostly just so that I didn't have to worry about trimming in between each of those cars. That just seemed like a little much for me. And uh, if you've seen any of my videos before, I am very open and honest about the fact that I do not enjoy fussy cutting. But these shapes were so smooth and like simple that it was much easier to fussy cut than some of the other projects that I've tried. It really wasn't super hard and it did not take me a long time, especially like I said with that white border. I tried to keep my border pretty slim just so that you could really see the sequins all the way around it once it is adhered to our shaker. Um, but in the scheme of fussy cutting, this was a really good one to cut. So if you are not a fan, I wouldn't be deterred from this one if I were you. I made myself a slimline card base by cutting a piece of craft cardstock down to be eight and a half by seven inches, and then I scored it at the three and a half mark. That's the size of a slimline that I prefer, and I'm stamping the all aboard with holiday cheer sentiment on the inside, and then holding my train in place on this white panel that we're going to be ink blending to get my front sentiment in the right alignment. This is the sending loads of Christmas 
Christmas cheer your way. And I think that it fits perfectly above the train for like the size that it is. And I just trimmed this panel down so there's a nice border all the way around with the craft, but you could definitely do a shaker that goes all the way to the edges if that is the look that you prefer. Then I took the Clouds for Days stencil and I am ink blending that up. I grabbed a few different distress inks and I'm working my way down from a darker teal to the lighter and then the lighter pink to the darker so that the bottom and the top of my cards kind of have that extra depth. I just like the dimension that that helps give to the scene and it definitely adds a lot of interest. I did switch my stencil around back and forth and you can see I'm just covering those center cloud cutouts with some more full stick post-its. I don't mind doing this because when I'm done I just stick those post-its right back onto my pad to use for masks later on. So once I had all of my layers in place I went back in with one of those teal inks and shaded up the edges just to make sure that the whole sky had a nice clean finish. You could see there were a couple spots where my stenciling kind of got away from me. And so I just also love the beautiful purple that happens when the teal and the pink mix. So I took the packaging from the All Aboard stamp set and I trimmed down one of those panels and you'll see it is just about the perfect fit. It's the perfect length and I just trimmed a little bit off of the width. Uh, you want to make sure that you have a nice border all the way around so that you have plenty of room to add your adhesive. I've also done this with um, like a score tape or some kind of tear tape and that works really well too but I'm just running a tape runner over three of those sides and then folding my packaging over and trimming the excess off of each corner so that when we adhere it down to our card base it goes on a lot more smooth and I'm adding in that candy Christmas shaker. I started with the little bit of color inspiration sequin mix that I had um, poured out on the side and I decided it just wasn't enough. So I added some in from the bag once I liked how it kind of spread across my scene, my little cloudy sky, uh, and I was happy, I sealed up that last side and added even more tape runner to the back. And we are going to adhere this right into place on our card front. And then the last step is adding in the train right on top. I love having the sentiment inside my scene and the main character, the main feature on the outside. I just think that it adds so much dimension, even though this is technically a very flat shaker. Um, and it's recycling because you're using packaging. So it's good for the planet for you to make a card like this. There's no excuse now. So you can see this is super fun. The sequins move around. You can still see them all the way around the train, even when you're not shaking it. It's a beautiful display piece card, and I hope that you are feeling super inspired to play with the new release out from Possum Stamps. I hope that you have an amazing week, and as always, happy crafting.